contractor John. And today we're down here in the basin where we're going to be installing a battery backup pump. But not just any battery backup pump. We're going to be installing a basement watchdog battery backup sump pump. If this isn't the best, it's 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 right there with the best. I mean, it, it, it's top in, in, in my opinion. This particular model here is rated at 2,500 gallons per hour. It'll pump at zero lift, and it's rated at 1,730 gallons per hour up to a 10-foot lift. And what that simply means is if you think about your basement, your, your pump, the bottom of your, your sump pit is usually a couple feet below the grade, and then your basement walls are 8 foot tall, so if you add those two together, you get about 10 foot, that this pump has to pump that water up and then out. So that's just talking about lift. The pressure of that water backing up against that pump makes it more difficult for the pump to pump, so it slows down the gallon rate, the rating. So if you have a little bit less than that, it, it, you might get it to 2,000 gallons per hour, but uh, not much better than that. This, this unit has just a 12-volt pump. There is another combination that the Basin Watchdog people manufacture and put out there. It's got a primary pump, a 110-volt primary pump with the 12 volt battery backup pump. If you're going, if you have it, if you have a good primary pump now, there's no need to go ahead and replace that. Just go ahead and buy this one. If you're going to replace the primary pump anyway, then I would encourage you to go ahead and buy the combination unit. Okay. So let's go over some of the things that we're going to need today. And in this kit comes the pump. The 12 volt pump, you've got your AC adapter, you've got your battery case, which your electronic control panel, we'll talk more about that when we do the install. Then you've got some PVC pipe and some miscellaneous fittings. I suggest you get an assortment of fittings, uh, a 22 degree angle fitting, a 45 and a 60 degree angle, uh, get a double female, get some street L's. Get a variety so you have them because the last thing you want to be doing is run out in the middle of the project back to the store. You'll need a Y because we're going to have to tap into the existing discharge line unless you're going to run a separate discharge line, in which case you won't need the Y. You'll need some PVC glue and primer. You'll need something to cut this PVC pipe with too. You can use a hacksaw, you can use a sawzall, or in this case we're going to be using a miter box that we have set up outside. Uh, check valve. You'll need a check valve. And then purchased separately is going to be the battery. Now there's several kind of different batteries that the basic watchdog people have. This one is a six hour standby battery, meaning it'll run six hours continuously on a, on a full charge. They make, a, I believe they make a four hour and an eight hour. Uh, this was kind of in the middle and I, I thought that this product, particular battery was going to take care of this situation here. Now these are shipped dry, so you will need a bag of acid and we'll be filling that battery up. And I suggest you do that outside so you don't drip or anything and ruin anything on the inside. Plus, when you fill it up, it, it does smell. It does bubble and smell a little bit, so it's better off to do that outside. And a word about safety. When you're filling that, make sure you've got your rubber gloves and your safety glasses on when you're filling that battery. Okay, the first thing you want to do is you've got your existing check valve here, and you want to understand that the, the pump pumps the water up through this pipe and discharges it outside. Well, when the pump shuts off, the pressure stops, so the water wants to come back. This check valve, there's a flap in there that seals it and keeps the water from going back to the, the pump. There's water from here. This pipe all the way up is full of water. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to drain it into the pit. But before we do that, we're going to unplug the pump because the last thing you want to do is have that pump kick on when you're sitting here trying to work on everything. So pull your pump, pull the plug on your pump, and then you're going to take this check valve and you're going to open this check valve up and you can see the water coming out of it already. Just open a little bit, let it come out, let it drain back down into the, into the pit. Alright, our pump, our pipe now is drained. You can see we've got that so we don't have to worry about when we cut into it up there. We don't have to worry about it. We took the fitting, the takeoff fitting, out of the pump because we want to cement our PVC pipe and so we're going to take and apply some primer, some PVC primer to the inside of this fitting 
and to the outside of the pipe. When we cut a piece of pipe about 36 inches long, for this instance, that should be long enough. And if you're better longer than shorter, but you can always throw a coupling in it. So Now we've got our glue. Give this a minute to set up that primer. And it's important that you prime it. You take off any ink, any residue, any any kind of residue that's stuck on there that would impede the adhesive of the cement. You want to make sure you get a good seal. So rub this around the pipe. Be liberal with it inside the fitting. And then when you stick it together, you want to push it together and you want to give it a twist. You can see that, give it a slight twist and then hold it for about 10 seconds. Let that glue set up and then you'll be good to go. Next thing we're going to do then is we're going to take this and we're going to screw it into our pump. But before we do that, we're going to make sure that we don't have any glue dripping down out of the inside of this pipe. So just rub your finger in here and make sure we don't have any glue that's dripping down before we screw it into the pump. And now be careful when you're screwing this into the pump because it's real easy to cross, th cross thread this because of the length of this pipe. So there you go. And again, this doesn't have to be super, super tight. Okay. One additional step is there's a sticker on this pump that says if we're using a check valve, which we are, we want to drill a hole in this new PVC pipe four inches above this elbow as a drain down. So we're just going to go four inches above it drill a hole in that PVC pipe and that's important so there isn't back pressure on that pump. Make sure you don't have any burrs or something inside that pump. And then we're going to stick this pump down inside. A little cramped in here. Stick this pump down inside here. Get it alongside this other primary pump. There, and that'll fit in there nicely. You can see we're, we're coming out. Now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to cut our pipe here and install our, our Y fitting here. So we can Y it off, come over here, 90 down, 45 down, check valve and then connect up to that pipe there. So here's the pipe where we're going to cut in our our Y pipe. So what you're going to do is lay this Y pipe in, in the center here and then mark the pipe where you're going to cut. Now make sure you don't mark it out here. Mark sure, make sure you mark it the length of the pipe inside the shoulder so that you can slide this up, up and in and glue it together and have this like this and we're going to dry fit it together before we glue it up so we'll be able to test fit it some. Sawzall and we're going to cut this pipe here. So we've got our pipe cut and I want to say something about it. Take a utility knife and just run it on the inside and the outside. It has to take any burrs off of it so nothing will hang up on there. And then take your Y. We're just going to dry fit stuff together. So stick your Y up in here. And now will be a good time to tighten that check valve off so this pipe has a little rigidity to it. Just slide that up in there. Don't worry about getting it all the way in. Now we're just trying to get it kind of close. So put that in there. Then take your, you've got another short piece of pipe and put that in here. Oh, that's not going to go. So now let's see if we can get a fitting and this is where all those fittings the variety of fittings come in so we're gonna try this guy first and just put that in there kind of rotate it a little bit so that it shoots over this way because that's where this pipe is and we're just dry fitting now so we're gonna kind of aim it towards that and take your sharp piece of pipe slide that in there and then you can see we had to put our check valve in here and again we just slid it out we didn't include the hose clamp but we got this here and we're a little bit off that way, so let's rotate this this fitting a little bit this way. Put 
this here, and that looks pretty close. Now we've got to put a sharp piece of pipe in here, and then put our 45 in there. And that looks pretty darn close there. It might be a little bit short, so we'll rotate this a little bit. And this is the part where you just gotta kind of put stuff together and if that goes in there. You got a little bit of short piece of pipe right here. We cut our small piece of pipe, we measured down into the check valve here. The shoulder's an inch and a half down, so an inch and a quarter, and then an inch for here, so we cut it like four inches long. We're lining it up with our pipe here, and it looks pretty good. So let's we're still dry fitting. Make sure that your pump is not all the way against the outside wall. Make sure it's off a little bit so you've got a little room to play if when we cut it don't fit exactly, you can always scoot it out. And again, mark this long pipe to the back side of the shoulder. We'll take that outside, cut it, and uh, we'll dry fit the whole thing together. Now right, we've got our pipe cut. We're just going to dry fit this thing together. Let's see where we're at. And we're a little bit to well, maybe not. just a hint long here. I think by the time we seat these down in that this pipe would be a tiny bit too long. So we'll shave this pipe off and we'll go from there. We've got our pipe cut to length now. Put that in there and we'll try to fit this together. And that doesn't look too bad at all. So what we're going to do now is we're getting ready to glue, glue things up. We're going to make some reference marks on each part of the pipe. So when we glue it up, we know exactly how to orientate the pipe so that it's not rotated the wrong way when we do that. Make them long enough because you're not slid in right now. And when you prime it, you don't want to totally wipe that mark off. So do that to all your joints. So we're priming our parts now. And there's no really particular order you have to do this in. Just make sure you get primer on And you want to do parts that you can put together in order, like we're going to do this into here and then we'll do this one. Because once this is put together and this pipe is in here, we're going to check our rotation again and make sure that we're still in square. Because everything is going to come off of this part right here as far as rotation goes. Alright, we've glued up our, our what I call non-critical joints. The one that doesn't matter on a rotation on a straight piece of pipe into that elbow. This we can adjust here. So that's not critical. And now we're going to get into our, what I call critical joints, the ones that the rotation of are going to affect the alignment. So this one here, we're going to slide on, give it a little twist, line up your marks that you made, and hold that on there for 10 seconds. And then we're going to do this bottom pipe into here. And then we'll do the, the last one. Make sure you're liberal with the cement. That one, a little wiggle, get it in there. Make sure you hold that one, let it set. If you don't hold them together, for some reason when you glue it, you put that glue in there, it wants to push the joint apart when you first initially put it in there. Just got something to do about the, with the chemical reaction or there's liquid in there and you're floating that pipe in on there and it just wants to come apart. So now this one is going to go into here. I've got to make sure now, this was a critical one, make sure that we're all lined up. It looks like it's a hint long, but we're going to be sliding into there. 
so everything else looks just fine. One thing to mention about this check valve is there's an arrow for flow on here because that flopper valve goes up and comes down. You, if you install it upside down, when the pump pushes, it's going to push it closed and it's not going to go anywhere. So make sure you have your flow arrow pointed in the correct position and it's going to push the water up and when it stops, it's going to come and it's going to close that flapper and stop it from going anywhere. That looks a little bit better there. Just give that pump a little bit of twist in there. So. Make sure that's up in there. Give it a little bit of a twist. Hold it together for 10 seconds. Give me a couple minutes to clean things up and we'll start doing the electronics to this project. Here we are outside and we're going to fill this battery up with acid. Put that box of battery acid up on top of something so we get a little gravity flow going here. Be very, very careful with this stuff. And you got to kind of watch inside here and make sure you don't overfill. at this point to leave it a tad bit low don't overfill it and it does smell so kind of stay up wind of it and that's why you want to do it outside not inside it will bubble away so we'll finish filling this we're going to put our caps on it and the instructions say there's a special cap for the battery probe and it's going to go in this second cell on the positive side. Read the instructions, it'll explain to you because there's a probe that goes in there so the electronics can monitor the battery level. Here we are, set the battery into our case. Let's drop it down in there. Put this to the side. And we've got our cover that goes on. Now, we've got to, we've got these safety tabs on this thing here so we got to take these safety tabs off you've got a positive a negative and then the battery chart so make sure you connect these up correctly negative to the negative side positive to the positive side swing them so that the wires are going towards the center, so when you put the cover on, it doesn't pinch. You pinch the wires. That, that sh startled me more than anything. And that's the alarm because we're on right now. See this probe goes down inside this hole and goes down inside the. Now it's sensing right now that the power is off because we have unplugged and run off the battery. So we'll set that in there. We'll plug our, all right, we've got our line picked up on here. And now we're gonna connect the wires to the pump. You can hear the pump start. And the pump, the battery backup pump now is running. And you wanna always connect this up with the electrical pump still off because you want to test and make sure that battery backup pump is working. And it is right now. Not, not very well because the battery's not going to be fully charged yet, but it is running. And as you can see down in the hole, it is taking the water out. Now that all that remains is this little gadget here is the sensor that gets put onto the pipe here. It gets wire tied onto the pipe with the wire tie they supply you at a height above 
that primary pump so that in the event the primary pump goes out, the water raises to this height, it will raise this float up and trigger, as you can see what just happened, and trigger the battery backup pump to go on. So this gets wire tied to this pump, to this pipe I mean, right at above the level of your primary pump. And then we'll wire tie these, we'll wire tie these. Now that alarm is going off because it wants us to know that the battery backup was activated. That's another safety thing, safety feature. So, all right, so we're gonna strap this on. We're gonna wire tie, wire tie our wires and make it neat. We'll be right back with you. Okay, we put our wire ties on. We'll just make it a little neater by cutting off the long pieces here. And I left a little bit of slack here in the line, so if you have to do something with the check valve, take it apart, you've got some slack in the in the line here. So, so that's about it. We've got our control pack right over here. It monitors everything. We plug that probe in the battery pack, so it'll tell you if the battery's low, the warning light will come on. The fuse is blown, it'll tell you the water level. The pump has been activated and the power is on. So right now we're good to go. Everything's good. We wire tight everything up. Put our lid on. You're going to have to cut an extra hole for that other pipe in your lid if you have one. And uh, we're good to go. So that's it, how to install a watchdog battery backup system in your basement. This is Contractor John. If you have any comments or questions, please visit my blog at contractorjohn.com. Have a blessed day.